The Shah's eldest son was born a year after the wedding. The prince seemed a jolly baby, likely to make the most of the carefree years before he discovers, like his father, the other side of the coin of power in the Middle East. Your son, the Crown Prince, is now a year old. Do you anticipate his assuming a kind of monarchical tradition of your sort, or would he be a different kind of king? Well, I hope for himself that uh, the country, when he will assume power, will be in such a state of maturity that he will have a little less burden. But uh, a king in this country, I think that morally and uh, in question of prestige will still keep a very dominant position. The Shah himself knows his own upper class only too well. As he arrived with Queen Farah Diba at the Marble Palace in Tehran for his birthday reception, the evening can have held few new faces. The ranks are pretty tight in the exclusive circle of families which rate invitations. The women are cosmopolitan and amusing. They enjoy gay life and resent the efforts of the Shah and his prime minister to limit their foreign expenditure. Their menfolk are mostly very rich and very self-seeking. They don't seem to care much about the Shah's plans. They bring to his court what seemed to me to be its air of somewhat self-conscious grandeur. Everyone seemed to be acting a part. The effect smacked more of a copy of 19th century European courts than of Iran's older traditions of royal life. Sometimes I think that if uh, anything happens to me, what will happen to the country? I remember my father one time, one day, told me that he was thinking of uh, creating such a machine that will automatically run the affairs of the country when he goes. I was hurt. I thought that maybe he did not trust in me. But when I assumed power, I saw how right he was. That's why my job and endeavor is also to create a machine that could run really the affairs of the country, at least the ordinary affairs of the country. He had already created his own intelligence agency. After the 1953 coup, the CIA helped him set up SAVAK, the Organization for National Intelligence and Security. To the Shah, the communists and supporters of Mossadegh were his only serious opposition. SAVAK ruthlessly suppressed them through torture and execution. Muhammad Ali Amoui was a member of Iran's Communist Party's military underground network. He was imprisoned after the 1953 coup and spent 24 years in prison. Aslan nemituram tozih bedam ke no edardesh chiye. Man faqat ishare mikonam in footballista waqt ke tup be beizashun mikhore che halati peyda mikonan. اصلا قابل مقایسه نیست با اون دردی که یک سفره چرمی هست بیزه رو میذارن و یواش یواش شروع میکنن به ماساژ دادن نمیتونه تداوم پیدا کنه بیهوش میشه آدم In the early 1960s, the Shah embarked on what he called his White Revolution, an ambitious series of reforms. They included dividing large parcels of land among the peasants and changing Iran's electoral system. The reforms were intended to transform Iran from a feudal society under the guidance of religious leaders into an industrialized country where the mosque had no say. In elaborate ceremonies, the Shah personally handed out the deeds to the farmers. But it was the electoral reforms that set the Shah on a collision course with the country's real power base. On the 9th of October, 1962, a high-ranking cleric sent a telegram to the Shah asking him to reverse the changes. In the name of God, the Beneficent, the Merciful, your Imperial Majesty. After expressing my greetings and blessings, newspaper reports indicate that in the law regarding local elections for provinces and cities, the government has not indicated that voters and those elected should be Muslim. Also, it has given women the right to vote, 
This has caused great concern for the eminent scholars and other groups of Muslims. Please order the reversal of those laws which are against the holy official religion of the country. Ayatollah Ruhollah Musavi Khomeini was one of the most prominent seminary teachers in Iran's religious capital, Qom. It was an ominous sign. The clergy, for the most part, had stayed out of politics. The unspoken deal was that they would back the monarchy as long as the monarchy protected the religious establishment. Everyone tries his hardest to have audience of the Shah on this day at a ceremony called the Salam. Religious men from all over the country were the first to make their salams and the first to go home again. They're a powerful lot and can give the Shah valuable support. <laughs> مراکز مذهبی می رفتن آقای آقایون آخوندا چجوری همدیگر رو حل می دادن که تو عکس با حلزت باشن و خیلی با احترام و خود من هم که می رفتم تو این مراکز خیلی با احترام می آمدن برای که می دونستن که من در کارهای خیریه هستم یا یه تقاضایی داشتن یا مثلا برای مرمت فلان مسجد یا مرمت فلان مرکز مذهبی a year later, on the 3rd of June, 1963, Ayatollah Khomeini went much further. It was the night of Ashura, the anniversary of the death of Imam Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad. Ayatollah Khomeini compared the Shah to Yazid, the 7th century caliph who had murdered Imam Hussein. Mr. Shah, I advise you, I'm telling you, Mr. Shah, that they are deceiving you. I really don't want people to be happy if they ask you to leave the country. Don't do whatever they ask you to do. Think for yourself, what is our relationship with Israel that the intelligence organization asks us not to talk about it? Is the Shah Israeli? This time, Ayatollah Khomeini was arrested by the Shah's police. The next day, thousands of his supporters took to the streets of Tehran and the religious capital, Qom. What religion, what religion, what thoughts, what thoughts, what thoughts, all the respect to the Imam was given to the Imam. The respect to the Imam, the respect to the Imam, and 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 the respect to بعضی از آقایونی که خیلی به مسائل نیستن گفتن حرکت کور بوده نه خیلی خیلی حرکت بینایی بود و همون حرکت بینایی منشأ بسیاری از آثار شد The Shah was taken aback by the number of non-clerics who joined Ayatollah Khomeini's movement Among them were members of the Freedom Movement of Iran a political party which was formed in the early 60s by the supporters of Mohammad Mossadegh اون توده های مردمی که ما بهشون دسترسی نداریم از طریق این شبکه روحانیت که چندین هزار مسجد در تمام ایرانه 180 هزار روحانی در سر تا سر ایران به هر کور دهی که شامردی مسجده یه حسینی هست وجود دارن همه اینها توی حوضه های علمیه درس کندن انسجام آموزش های عقیدتی دارن همه اینها خودش یک شبکه بزرگ یک ارتش ایدالوژیک هستش بنابراین آقای خمینی وقتی وارد مبارز سیاسی میشه ما استقبال میکردیم استقبال کردیم دلیلش هم این بود که خب ما به اون توده ها دسترسی نداشتیم The army responded with brute force The tanks moved in and opened fire on the demonstrators The Shah's government announced that 20 people were killed Ayatollah Khomeini's followers estimated that hundreds had lost their lives the true numbers will never be known. اون موقعی که این خباس نگرانی و تعجب شد که چطور مردم موقعی که یک برنامه هایی ریخته شده که به نفعشون به نفع کارگر و روستا و زن و گروه زحمت کش به قول چپی ها چطور ممکنه که تظاهرات و شرکت میکنن در این تظاهرات بعد که خب اونجا با کمک آقای علم که اون موقع نخست وزیر بود و واقعا مسئولیت یک نخست وزیر رو انجام داد که اینها رو خوابوند دیگه ما فکر کردیم تمام شده نه تنها فکر میکردیم سرکوب شده و تمام شده فکر کردیم شاه شکست ناپذیره ما همه رو از شاه میدیم اصلا نمیدونستیم که بی علم همون بساط 15 سال بعد تکرار خواهد شد 
But even then, the Shah still felt the need to keep the clergy sweet. Under pressure from the religious authorities, he released Ayatollah Khomeini in April 1964. Later that year, the Ayatollah released a statement. He condemned the growing number of American military advisors in Iran and a law which gave US soldiers immunity from prosecution by local courts. According to this disgraceful law, if an American military advisor or even his servant harms a prominent Muslim scholar or an Iranian authority or citizen, the police cannot arrest him. But if the dog of an American is insulted, the police have to intervene and the dog's case has to be presented to the court.